Hello and welcome to part 37 of my video series on how to use Blender 2.6. In today's video, I'll be covering eight new features of Blender's new B-Mesh. So what we're really covering today are the new features of Blender 2.63. At the end of April 2012, Blender 2.63 was released, and on May 10th, just a few days ago from now, Blender 2.63a was released, which resolved some bug issues um, of the original Blender 2.63 release. So if you don't have the new Blender 2.63a or newer, if you're in the future, you should go ahead and download that now. Everything I'm talking about in this video will not work with versions below 2.63. All right, so feature number one is B-Mesh and N-Gons. B-Mesh is one of the biggest upgrades to Blender since the upgrade from Blender 2.49 to Blender 2.5 or since the addition of the Cycles Render Engine. What B-Mesh is, is basically an entire rewrite of edit mode in Blender. It allows us to create polygons uh, for the first time that have more than four or three sides. Up until now, when you were modeling an object in Blender, Blender would not allow you to create faces in edit mode of a mesh that had more than three or four sides. That is no longer the case. Because of N-Gons, which are polygons uh, with more than or any number of sides really, that's what the N stands for I believe, um, we can have a lot more flexibility in the way that we create objects, um, in other words model, in Blender. I'll show you a very simple example of this. I'm going to go ahead and select the cube. I'll turn on my screen task keys first so you can see what I'm pressing hopefully, um, down here on the left side of my 3D viewport. I'm going to go ahead and press tab to go into edit mode and then go into face select mode and just select the top face of the cube. Now I'm going to go ahead and press W and select subdivide and up until now I'm going to kind of edit the video here so it'll, you'll see what happens um, with previous versions of Blender. So up until now if you subdivided a single face on a mesh all these surrounding faces got triangles. What's happened here is I selected the top face and of course I pressed W for the specials menu and subdivide. And what subdividing does, of course, is it splits your selected faces up uh, in two directions, in this case the X and Y axes. But to accommodate these two new cuts and these four new faces, the surrounding faces had to adjust to the new geometry. And to do that, because faces could only have either three or four sides, all these surrounding faces became made of triangles. Um, and now B-Mesh with N-Gons allows us to model the way we want, which results in no triangles. If you don't know that triangles were bad until now, now you do. Triangles are not something, if you're familiar with topology of 3D modeling, triangles are something that you want to really avoid. And the simplest way that I can explain that, or the most um, common example of why triangles are bad, is if you use the subdivision surface modifier. If you use the subsurf modifier um, and you have triangles in your mesh, especially triangles that all come together um, to a very kind of clustered point, um, in this case we have a single vertex that's right there, but there are more than three edges running to it. In fact, there are one, two, three, four, five edges that all run together and attach at the same vertex. And because there's that cluster of edges, the mesh can't smooth out very well with the subsurf modifier uh, applied to that mesh. So I'm going to go ahead and undo a few times to get back to our base mesh. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and select that top face again and press W and subdivide just like before. But now with Blender 2.63 with the addition of B mesh, we can model exactly what we want. In this case, it's subdivided the exact same. We took the top face, press W and subdivide. And we got those four faces with two cuts made to that face, but all these surrounding faces on each side of the cube were left pretty much alone. And that's because each one of those faces, because of N-Gons, which allow for more than four edges on a face, now have, or all of these faces, now have five sides. If I select these faces, one, two, three, four, five, you can see that this face is now just one face, but it has five sides. I'll even show that off further by grabbing this top vertex uh, and moving it up. And you can really see that this face is one face, even though it has five sides. Now we can keep on going with this uh, concept. I'll select another face 
and press W and subdivide. We now have four more faces where that one face was. Um, we can even change the number of cuts over here in our tool shelf um, to two cuts or even three cuts. Now I, I got a few questions from a few users in the last couple of weeks um, wondering where this section is. It's in your tool shelf which is the T button and if you don't see this section, in other words somehow it's gotten closed and you can't find it, um, just for look for the little plus at the bottom of your tool shelf and click it and you'll get that section back. That's the exact same as the um, little panel that you get when you add a new mesh to your scene. Um, it'll be that little plus if you can't find it. So we added even more geometry to the one quadrant of the top face and they act just like normal polygons for the most part. I'm going to press this uh, extrude and extrude them up and they work just as normal. I have found unfortunately that the loop cut, in other words control R while you're in edit mode, does work a little bit buggy uh, with this new version of Blender. Blender 2.63 is the first time that we've had uh, B-Mesh integrated to Blender officially and so it's likely to have some bugs and unfortunately the loop cut which I've used a whole lot um, with Blender 2.5 onwards um, isn't working quite as well. It works in a lot of cases but you'll notice that on faces surrounding or where geometry has changed, in other words where we've actually taken advantage of n-gons with more than four sides You'll notice that when you use the loop cut tool, uh, like right now, I can't actually go around the cube like I should be able to because of these normals. Now, faces have um, what's called a normal, and the normal is the location and the which way or the direction that the face is facing. All these faces are facing outwards, and the normals are kind of represented by the dots in the middle of the faces. Um, and you'll notice that some of these dots are a little bit higher than others or are not always in the center of the face, especially where there's more geometry on one side or the other. This is a perfect example. This face, um, the marker for the face, in other words, the um, normal isn't in the middle of the face. And that's because there's more geometry, more vertexes and more edges along this top side than on the sides or the bottom of that face. And so the normal kind of averages out where all the faces are and puts the normal right where that is. And so now um, on the four sides of the cube, excuse my uh, strange orbiting, the normals are all slightly different. You notice that this normal on this side is a little bit higher than this one. So when I press Control R to do a loop cut, um, it only likes to do a loop cut around um, faces with like normal. So loop cut does work in some places as you can see I'm moving my mouse around but it's um, only finding some of the uh, edge rings um, but not others. Of course you can select the uh, edge the edges manually by holding shift. You might even be able to press um, alt. No it's not working so I would have to select these ones manually um, and then press W and subdivide and that would work just as normal. Feature number two is Blender's new Dissolve tool. What the Dissolve tool allows us to do is to simplify our meshes when modeling by joining together multiple faces on the same plane. Now this is allowed because n-gons, which are again faces with more than four sides, um, can be joined together to create a single face even if they're not together in a rectangular shape. I'm going to go ahead and select my cube and press tab to go into edit mode. I'll go ahead and turn on my screencast keys again so you guys can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to press W and subdivide to make a 2x2 two two cube. And I'll go into a face select mode for now and we'll select two of these faces. And to use the dissolve tool you can either go to the mesh menu at the bottom of your 3D viewport and select dissolve and dissolve or you can just press the X key which is the same as delete and you can select, select Dissolve. When you select Dissolve, those two faces become one face. Now again, you're not limited to making a face that's just a rectangular shape. If I select that face and hold Shift and select that face and press X or Delete, I can select Dissolve again. And I now have a face that's an L shape, which is kind of cool. 
And of course, this acts just like a normal face, so I can press E to extrude it, and that face is in fact an L-shaped, or created an L-shaped extrusion. I can now select faces, in fact, all the faces on one of the sides, and press X and dissolve, and that creates just one face to simplify that geometry down uh, for us to use later. Now, the Dissolve tool is context sensitive, which means that if you are selecting faces or vertexes or edges, it'll act in slightly different ways. If I am selecting edges and I select an edge and press X and Dissolve, of course, it'll just kind of dissolve that edge without disturbing or by thereby merging those two faces. Before, if we selected this edge and pressed X and we didn't have the dissolve feature before, so we have to press edges, it would make a hole in the mesh. And so with, with the addition of the dissolve tool, if I press X and then dissolve, uh, it just gets rid of or dissolves that edge and leaves a one solid face where there were two faces. If you uh, select vertexes and select a vertex and press X and dissolve, it'll get rid of that vertex and any other edges that rely on that vertex to exist. In other words, we just created one face out of four by dissolving that one vertex. Now there is an option here. If I select um, and dissolve these four edges, so I press X and dissolve, sometimes it will leave behind a vertex um, or vertexes in the middle of your mesh. In that case, if you don't want vertexes to be left along an edge, let's say, um, there is an option, I'm gonna go back and press X and dissolve. There should be an option after you press dissolve to dissolve vertexes. This will come in handy uh, with a feature uh, or one of the other features that I'm going to be talking about in a sec, but that is dissolved. So if you want to have a simplified uh, mesh or simplified geometry, you can select any of the faces that you want that are on the same side and press X and dissolve and that will work. I believe it'll allow you to select faces that are not on the same side, but you will get some pretty weird results. I'm gonna press X and dissolve, and it allowed it, but um, that's probably not a very good idea. Feature number three is Vertex Connect. What Vertex Connect is, um, as the name implies, is it allows us to connect vertexes together in the same mesh. Now what this re means really is that we would be connecting two vertexes in the same mesh together um, that are on opposite sides of the same face. Now NGONS actually allows this for the first time. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to go and press tab to go into edit mode and now we're going to subdivide some of the faces up. So I'll select one of the sides and press W to subdivide and we'll go to the opposite side and we'll press W and subdivide and just to make things interesting I'll change the number of cuts on that side uh, so we have an odd number of faces running along this side and an even number on this side. Now, how would we connect um, that vertex to that vertex together? In other words, how would we make an edge that runs from that vertex to that vertex? Well, that's what the Vertex Connect tool allows us to do, and very easily. If you watched my video on edit mode, the second video on edit mode, edit mode 02, custom shapes, You'll know that to create um, kind of fill in holes or uh, create faces that actually work, it took a lot of effort. You had to, uh, in this case, if this were even possible, let's say we had a similar model in previous versions of Blender, we would need to actually delete this entire face and then do some extruding um, to make it all possible. With uh, Vertex Connect, it makes it a lot easier. I'm just going to select those two vertexes, of course, by holding Shift. And then to use Vertex Connect, I actually need to find the Vertex menu. Now, I haven't really talked about this before, but if you press Control F, which is for the Faces menu, uh, if you're in Face Select mode, you can uh, use that. If you press Control E, that brings up the Edges menu. And of course, Control V will bring up the Vertices menu. Uh, these are all context uh, specific. These menus all contain um, the same things and even more than the specials menu. So they kind of, they're all the options that are available to edit faces, vertexes, and edges in edit mode. I'm gonna go ahead and press, because we're doing vertex select or vertex connect, I'll press control V to bring up my vertices menu. And vertex connect, as we can see, is right down here, and it is the J key. So I can select it either here, or I can just select two vertexes, 
uh, that are on the opposite sides of the same face and press J and that will connect those two vertexes. I should be able to even select uh, the same vertex again uh, even though this would be creating a triangle which is bad. I'm just doing this for demonstration's sake. Um, and then press J to connect those two vertexes and so that's a very very handy tool. Um, it'll all come together once we talk about more of the features uh, but that's Vertex Connect. It's the J shortcut in edit mode. Feature number four is the knife tool. And the knife tool is one of the coolest additions to Blender, um, with the exception possibly of Ngons and Mimash. And the knife tool is going to change the way that you model because it's such a handy tool. The knife tool actually isn't the new tool. It used to exist in Blender 2.49. It was slightly different. But when Blender 2.5 came out, it was left out until this new edition of BMesh and Ngons. The knife tool, you have to use in edit mode, and it's used to cut up a mesh. I don't mean cut up as in cutting meshes into multiple meshes. What I mean is cutting a mesh up to add more edges and vertexes and faces. Kind of like you would use the loop cut tool, uh, which I mentioned is a little bit buggy now. Uh, but it's that same idea. So to use it, you have to be in edit mode of an object. So with this cube selected, I'll press tab, of course, to go into edit mode. And then I'm going to press K, and K is the keyboard shortcut for knife, go figure. And when you press K um, in edit mode, you'll see your mouse cursor change to a little knife. Uh, and you'll see that your header at the bottom of your 3D viewport has changed. The buttons are gone and the menus are gone. What you get is a list of keyboard shortcuts that you can use while using the knife tool, which is really handy. Now with the knife tool, when you take your mouse cursor and hover it over the mesh in edit mode, uh, after you've pressed K, you'll see that there's a little green dot, and that little green dot marks the end of a cut. To create a cut or to start a cut, you click with your mouse, your left mouse button, and that will start a cut. Now for my first example, I'm gonna actually cut from edge to edge, and then I'll uh, solidify that cut. So I'm going to click on one edge. You'll notice that when you um, put your mouse over an edge, it changes color a little bit. So I'll click there and then drag it across. I'm not uh, holding any buttons right now. And you'll notice that the it leaves a uh, purple line behind it. That's where your cut is going to be once you confirm the cut. So I'll go to the other edge across from it and I'll click. And now I have another like trail of a cut where I can keep going. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the enter key or the spacebar key and that will confirm those two red dots and the line in between it. So I'll go ahead and press enter. And I have made a cut, um, dividing that top face of the cube into two faces. That cut actually goes a little bit diagonally, just because of the way that I dragged my purple line and clicked. But that's the knife tool. It allows you to cut your mesh up. But it's a lot more powerful than that. Remember all those keyboard shortcuts? Those all do different things, and you can actually combine them together to get some really amazing results to make modeling a whole lot faster of a process. I'm going to go ahead and undo that cut. So press Control Z a few times, or Control Z a few times. And let's go ahead and use the knife tool again. Uh, this time, I'm going to kind of change my view a little bit and press the K key. Now, I mentioned that you can keep going. So you don't have to click just twice. You can actually click multiple times. But you can actually make cuts change direction uh, in the middle of a face. A cut doesn't have to be from edge to edge. It can be from point to point to point. It does need to actually end at two different edges though. Um, let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna click on one edge and then we'll drag out or just move the mouse out a little bit and I'll click there and click there and click there and I'll end at the other um, or opposing edge and I'll click right there. And now with my mouse just anywhere, I can press enter or the space bar and it will end that cut. And now we actually have two faces where there were, or was one face, but they are a jaggy, or they have a common jaggy edge or multiple edges. And those are actually just two faces. If I click them, uh, you can see that's just two faces. And to show you uh, what the possibilities kind of are with this, I'm gonna press E to extrude that edge, or that face rather, and you'll see that it makes a very kind of interesting extrusion. I'm going to press Control Z and extrude the other one just to show you what it looks like. And that's just one face. Now sometimes when you do these jaggy cuts, you'll notice something strange happen with your face markers. These little normals, little dots or squares on the side of each face. Normally, they're in the middle of a face. When faces were only square or triangular, 
these dots were always in the very middle of that face. But when faces can be very different and interesting shapes, that little square might not be in where you expect it or might not be in the middle of that face. Sometimes, as in this case, that little dot actually isn't even on the face. It's a little bit off the face because the dot always kind of goes in the average center of the location of the face. So because of these indents, the little dot isn't actually on the face, which could get confusing. But of course, you can just right click on the face to select it and you'll get the idea. Sometimes it might get confusing with dots um, just kind of hanging off in the air, but uh, you'll get used to it. Now, as far as those keyboard shortcuts were concerned, we'll go through them really quick. I'm going to press K to bring up my knife tool. We've already talked about using the left mouse button to de define and cut lines, which of course we did multiple times for that jagged line. We press the return or space bar to confirm the cut. We can press escape or the right mouse button to get out of the knife tool. So if I've started a cut or I haven't confirmed a cut yet and I press escape, it'll just exit me from the knife tool and forget about what I was just doing. And that's kind of nice. Escape is a pretty generic uh, command to get out of anything in Blender. I'll press K again. E is for a new cut. So you can actually make multiple cuts before you confirm any of them. If I start a cut, so I cut from there to there, I don't have to continue this cut. I can actually start a whole new cut that's not attached to that cut in any way. If I press E, it'll kind of exit that cut and now, before I even confirm that cut, I can make an entirely new cut right there. And I'll press E. And then maybe I'll even connect these two new lines before I've actually uh, confirmed them. So I'll go from that edge to that edge and then press E. And now I might press Enter or Spacebar to confirm those cuts. Now, this brings me to my next point. Sometimes this can act a little bit buggy. All these tools are brand new. So they don't always work perfectly. As you can see, not all of those cuts work, even though they really should have. So instead of ending up with four faces where this one face was, um, kind of when I cut in the shape of an H, I got just two of the cuts. For some reason, those two other cuts did not work. That's a little bug. I'm sure they'll iron that stuff out for the, the next um, 2.64 version of Blender and Bmesh. Um, let's keep on going with those uh, keyboard shortcuts. Let's go ahead and press K to make a new cut. Um, if we hold down the control key um, and hover over an edge while using the, the knife tool, the knife will uh, snap to the center of that edge. So if you want to um, make an edge coming off of the center of another edge, in other words, we want to put a vertex right there, uh, we can. I'm holding on the control key right now. And so I might go from that edge up top to the middle of this edge. I'm holding control the entire time. And that will work. I can press uh, enter. And now I have a cut going from the middle of where this edge was to the middle of where this edge was. Again, I can do that from side to side as well. So I'm going to press K to bring up my knife tool. I'll hold control down and then click here. In fact, I might even be able to click anywhere on that line while holding control. And I'll hold control again. And because um, that is actually already two um, edges, we can't see the vertex right now because we're in the knife tool. But when I hold control down, it also allow me to go to the end or to the end of a edge as well. So that I'm actually going to be connecting to an already existing vertex right there. And now I'll press enter. And I have, see, there's a the vertex right there. Now, that vertex already existed, but it connected these two vertexes, which is uh, nice. Um, if you want to keep going, you can combine all these different tools that I've been talking about. You can combine or join those two vertexes again by holding shift and clicking, clicking the second one. And then I can press J and that could continue that cut. Um, let's finish off those keyboard shortcuts within the knife tool. So I'm going to make a whole new cube because that cube's kind of gotten a little bit messy. Um, I'm going to do for the, the next keyboard shortcut, I'm going to press 1 to go to my front view. And we're in perspective, so I'll press 5 to get to my front orthographic view. Again, that was 1 and then 5 on my number pad. And we'll go, go ahead and press K. We have to go into edit mode first. <laughs> go ahead and press K. Um, the next one is angle constraint. So if I press C, that will turn on angle constraint. You'll notice these little off and on. Um, triggers or displays uh, on the uh, header. 
So with the angle constraint turned on with the C key, uh, if I make a cut, so I can I'll just start over here and I'll click over here, and then we can go across and it will actually cut across that face, but it's constraining me to 45 degree angles. I can't make any kind of weird angles once I've pressed C. Of course, if I press C again, that'll turn that off, but I want to make a, uh, a straight edge, so I'll go across and click, and now I'll press enter, and I've made a cut across that face that goes exactly following, or is, is it exactly even on the Z or Z axis following the X axis across. Now, you're probably asking yourself, can you make a cut that goes all the way through the mesh? I'm actually going to, shoot, I'm gonna redo that one. I'll just go ahead and make a new cube. The question is, if I go to my front view and press K and press C and make a straight cut across and press enter, what if I want this cut to extend all the way through uh, the cube? And I can. I'm going to undo that cut and we'll go back to our front view. I'm going to press K to bring up my knife tool and the last keyboard shortcut is the Z or Z cut through uh, shortcut. So I'm going to press Z or Z and that will turn cut through on. And now if I make a cut across the cube, I'll go from there to there and then I'll press enter to confirm that cut with uh, cut through turned on, it should have actually made a cut all the way through the mesh. Now, sometimes it doesn't work properly. Sometimes it won't cut the very back of the cube or it might miss some. And that's because, again, this tool is new, um, but it does work with simpler meshes. And let's say if it did forget um, that side, of course, you could use Vertex Connect. So let's say that it, it you made the cut through and it missed one of the sides, well, of course, you could select the vertexes and press J to um, connect the missing edge between those vertexes. Uh, so that's the knife tool. It's a really handy tool. It kind of does replace, uh, in sometimes awkward ways, though, the loop cut tool, which I do hope they fix. But this actually has a lot more possibilities and will help you make uh, geometry on more complicated meshes much more easily. Feature 5 is the Bevel tool. This tool will allow you to take a edge or a face of a mesh in edit mode and make that edge or face a little bit smoother by adding a new diagonal face with a new edge loop. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go ahead and press tab on a selected mesh, in this case the default cube. And now you can add the bevel uh, or a bevel to a edge or a face, so you can be in one of those two modes. I'm going to select in this case um, the top face of my default cube. Now you can find bevel under either the mesh menu and it'll be under either faces or edges. Of course, if you have a uh, face or edge selected, it'll be there, okay? And you can find it under the control F, the faces menu, or control E, the edges menu. Uh, but where I usually find it is under the W specials menu. The shortcut, of course, is W. Maybe I'll turn on my shortcuts or my screen display so you guys can see what I'm seeing or pressing. Let's go ahead and with that top face selected, let's press W and bevel. And as you can see, what's happened is that it's taken the edge of that selected face and made a new edge loop and made the original face a little bit smaller so that you get a new set of diagonal faces, kind of like a picture frame around that original face. Now it made a very large bevel in this case because down here on my tool shelf, of course that's the T key, uh, there is a new bevel section which gets put up um, right after you add the bevel to a face or an edge and you can adjust the percentage of the bevel. What that percentage means of course is that if you make the number smaller you get a smaller bevel, go higher, it's a higher bevel. Uh, what this percentage means is how much should the new or the now two vertexes where there was one vertex how much should they move in towards the middle of the face or down towards the next vertex on the perpendicular edge. So I'm going to undo. What's going to happen is with each one of these four corner vertexes, uh, when I bevel, there'll be a new edge loop and the higher the percentage, the more bevel there is, the, well let's go ahead and do it. I'll do bevel and you'll see that this vertex right here, uh, if I'm in vertex select mode, there we go, that would continue to slide down. Let's see if I can continue that. I actually can, that's kind of cool. So at 100%, the bevel will go all the way down to the, or 
1%, which is 100%. We'll go all the way down to the floor, the next vertex, or I can make my bevel very small, which would be something I'd probably do more often. Let's go ahead and undo that. I'm going to go and select a edge, and that one's okay. And let's go ahead and press Control E. I'll do it differently this time. And bevel. The edges menu, of course, is Control E. That's what a bevel or beveled edge looks like. Of course, and I can I can adjust the percentage as well. There are two more checkboxes, even and distance. So I'm going to actually make that top face beveled again. So W or maybe Control F for the faces menu and bevel. If I check even, you'll see that I believe what happens there is the amount uh, that it goes inwards becomes the same as it moves downwards, so it makes an exact 45 degree angle, I believe, in most cases, or at least with one face. And distance will affect it too. I'm not really sure what that does, but I'm sure you could figure that out if you spend a few minutes playing around with it. Um, now the bevel tool is somewhat still in beta, or somewhat still in development, which means that it doesn't work perfectly in all cases. Um, I talked a little bit about uh, the, the fact that the new beveled um, edge loop slides down a percentage of the perpendicular edge. So if I've beveled this top face, the new edge, which was, would be the bottom of the uh, diagonal face, would slide down. The problem is, is that when you have n-gons, you can have uh, uneven or not equal edges that run perpendicular to your face that you want to bevel. I'm going to go ahead to show you this and select these two edges and press W and subdivide. So now we have an edge here that's longer than an edge here. Uh, that could be possible as well without n-gons, but uh, n-gons really mark this problem. If I select this edge up top and I press W and bevel, because it's sliding down a certain percentage towards the next vertex, so in other words towards this vertex and this vertex uh, where those two edges were before, the uh, new beveled face becomes uneven and you would think that this even button would fix that. It doesn't, neither does distance, it doesn't, uh, but you can make the bevel smaller and do they, does it even affect it? Not really. So that's one of the issues with having it a percentage rather than a fixed um, distance in Blender units. But let's go ahead and try out using multiple or beveling multiple faces. That does work. Uh, so I'm going to select those two faces and press W and bevel. Now that's what happens. Of course, uh, well in this case, if you do select even, it will affect the result as will distance. Let's go ahead and make these numbers smaller so we can see what's happening a little bit better. If I don't have either of those checkboxes selected, you will notice that some of the edges are different. You'll notice that this beveled um, new face is significantly slimmer than the end of that face uh, over here, or this face over here. And you might think that, that, that clicking even or distance would fix that. It does somewhat, but not entirely. Um, so that is a little bit of an issue. Now, if you actually tried out the development version of Blender 2.63, you might remember that if you pressed, um, or if you beveled an edge or a face, you would get the option of making a smooth or recursive bevel, which means that it would make more than just one diagonal face, it would make a whole bunch, and make an edge uh, or uh, the edges of a face smooth, and that would have been over here. They actually took that away right when they officially released Blender 2.63, and that was because it wasn't ready. Hopefully this tool will get a lot better for Blender 2.64, but until then, it does work okay. Uh, you can try it out and let me know what you think. Feature 6 is the Limited Dissolve tool. Now of course, earlier in this video, I talked about the Dissolve tool, but the Limited Dissolve tool is still a very powerful feature that you'll find yourself using, especially if you are a new Blender user, or if you find yourself in a situation where your mesh is more complicated than it needs to be in order to model what you want to model. In this case, I have a cube, and of course a cube has six sides, but something I've seen new Blender users do is take the cube and go into edit mode, pressing tab, of course, and then they'll press W and subdivide, and they'll crank the number of cuts up to 10, which means that the cube is still a cube, uh, it looks the same from object mode, but in edit mode, of course, we now have 100 faces on each side of the cube instead of just one face, which means that we have 600 faces instead of 6. 
And if you know anything about rendering, you'll know that, that the more uh, faces you have in a scene, the uh, slower it will be to render. And so you don't want something like this, especially if you're going to be changing it uh, into something other than a cube. Now, of course, we can simplify this by using the limited dissolve tool. So what I'll do is I'll switch into face select mode and press A and A again to make sure I have everything selected that I want to simplify, which is going to be everything in this case. And you can use the limited dissolve tool by going to the mesh menu and under the dissolve submenu, you'll find limited dissolve. And if I click it, what's going to happen is it's going to join together all the adjacent faces that are similar in angle, similar in the way that they're facing in the 3D environment. So I'm going to go ahead and click it and it joined together all the faces on each side automatically, really solving our problem entirely. What it actually did was it joined together all the faces that were facing the same way that had a similar angle of 15 degrees or less. Over here is the limited dissolve section in the tool shelf. If I turn this number up, more faces will join together. But of course, because all of the sides are 90 degrees different, if I leave this number less than 90 degrees, and more than zero degrees, because if my faces are joined together by zero degrees, nothing will get joined together. But if I clank this number up to one, that will solve that problem, and my mesh gets greatly simplified. Let's go ahead and delete this cube. I'm gonna try this on something else. So let's go ahead and press Shift A and add a UV sphere. Now, of course, when you add a UV sphere, by default, the number of segments is 32, and the number of rings is 16, which means that there are 32 faces around the UV sphere, and the UV sphere is 16 um, faces high, which means that we have 32 times 16 faces, which is about 1,000 faces on this default UV sphere. Now, of course, if you transform it in any way, if you move it or rotate it or scale it, that section will go away and you can't change the number of faces on the UV sphere, which is a great headache to new Blender users, as I've experienced and been told. But this, to uh, simplify this, we can use the limited dissolve tool by pressing tab to go into edit mode. I'll press A and A again to make sure everything is selected and I'll go to mesh and dissolve and limited dissolve and it will uh, join together all the adjacent faces that are by default 15 degrees or less in similar angle. Now, of course, because of N-Gons and V-Mesh, it'll make uh, some faces that are uh, not square, which is just fine, um, but it means that you'll be able to get the original um, geometry or layout of faces that the UV sphere started with, but you can adjust the amount of um, joining together by changing the angle. Uh, you'll probably change it down. If you uh, go too high, it will stop looking like a UV sphere. But that's basically the tool. You can see it's gonna be really handy for a lot of users, especially if you get a mesh that's more complicated than it needs to be, and you wanna continue modeling something um, out of a lower poly mesh. Now, of course, this tool will work better with something that has flatter sides, like a vehicle or something like that. But that's the limited dissolve tool. Feature seven is the inset faces tool. If you're not familiar with what insetting a face is, it's something that's commonly done in 3D modeling to create a nice inset, in other words, a nice smaller face inside another face. It's something that's commonly done around, let's say, a character's eyes or a character's mouth to create nice concentric edge loops running around the eye and running around the mouth. Um, we've always been able to do this before, um, but it only really worked with a single face. I'll show you how we did it before. I'm gonna go ahead uh, with the default cube and press tab to go into edit mode and go into face select mode and select just the top face of the cube or any face you like. And now we had to do this in a few steps before. Uh, so we had to actually extrude this face first. So I'll press E to extrude, but we want the extruded face to be smaller, but also on the same level as the original face. So we right clicked and that put the face back in the same spot. And then we scaled. So press S and then move your mouse in and click and that's an inset face. It works well, but it takes multiple steps, and it works well with one face, but not more than one face at the same time. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna undo a few times so we get back to the original cube, and I'm gonna hold shift and select a, another face, so we have two faces on different planes, and I'm gonna press E to extrude, just like before, and then right click, and then press S to scale. But as you can see, when I scale inwards by default, 
it scales towards the median point of those two selected faces, which means that it scales in towards the middle of the cube about. So we don't get a nice even inset face. It's not aligned. We could, I mean, move it that up and move this one over. Um, and that would get something like what we want. But now that face is thicker. It has a thicker inset than the other side faces as well as, well, that face is thicker as well. So it doesn't do a very good job. The inset faces tool fixes that. So let's go ahead and undo uh, back to the original cube. And I'm going to select just this top face. Oops. And we will use the inset faces tool, which you can find under the mesh menu. It's under the faces menu, which of course you can get to quickly by going and pressing control F. And it's called inset faces right there. You can also find it under the specials menu, which is the W key, of course. And there it is. Uh, inset faces. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Now it did make an inset. You'll see these little dots, which are, if I zoom out, you can see them a little bit easier, I think. Those are actually really thin faces that have been created. And there is actually a really thin inset that's 0 0.01 of a, of a Blender unit uh, in width. Of course, we can change that over here on our tool shelf. The thickness right now is 0 0.01. I'll just drag that over so it's a little bit thicker. And as you can see, we have an inset face with only really one step, maybe two if you count the uh, adjusting the amount, but that's really all it is. It's pretty easy to do. There are more options here though. You can play around with these boundary, offset even, and offset relative um, buttons, and you'll figure out what those do. I haven't spent very much time myself with them. Something else you can do is change the depth. So this is kind of like creating a bevel or extruding and then scaling. If you change the depth, it'll go inwards or outwards, depending. Um, kind of like a bevel or a extrusion, as I said. You can also, I'm going to undo so it's, well, we'll actually do it again, W and inset faces. You can also change the inset to an outset, which means that instead of making a smaller face inside the original face, it'll actually make a new edge ring or an edge loop rather outside of the existing face. Let's go ahead and check outset. And as you can see, it made a uh, edge or face or ring of faces around the original face. And again, we can change the thickness of that. This would be really helpful in modeling, let's say, a vehicle or a building. If you wanted to create a, let's say, a little um, railing around the top of the building, you could change the thickness um, around there and then do another inset face but outwards from there. Let's go ahead and select multiple faces. I'm going to select the top face and the side face back from the original cube. And I'll do uh, W and inset faces. And this time, I'll make a thickness of something smaller, we can actually use the inset faces tool to do a really nice extrusion. Something you can do is, if you'll notice, when I apply the inset faces tool, the faces that are selected are the ring of faces that are actually providing the inset, the outer faces. And that's because the select outer checkbox is checked by default. If you uncheck it, the inner faces are selected. And of course, you can still adjust, adjust the thickness and that works well. But the inset faces tool, because it has the thickness option and the depth option, you can actually create a really great extrusion um, from your inner faces. Now, if we just pressed E to make an extrusion, it would extrude diagonally. We would get these two faces that, that don't extrude at a 90 degree angle from the original face. And if we wanted that, I mean, we could play around with the um, uh, scaling from normals, but still we'd have to play around and adjust it. But the inset faces tool kind of solves this problem. If I, uh, with those selected faces, I press W and inset faces. If I change the thickness to zero, which means there's no insetting, but I change the depth to something higher, we get a really nice even extrusion. And as you can imagine, this would be really good for something like a building or again a vehicle. Um, we can even do a uh, extrusion, but inwards to create a nice, let's say, a nice kind of a chair uh, out of a cube like that. So that is the inset faces tool. It's a really handy tool, and I'm sure you'll use it uh, in your future modeling. And finally, finishing us off is feature number eight, Vertex Slide. Vertex Slide is similar to another tool found in Blender called Edge Slide. And both tools are used to slide vertexes along the surface of a given mesh without hopefully distorting that mesh's general shape. 
Let's go ahead and show you what Edge Slide does first before we get to a Vertex Slide. I'm going to go ahead and delete this default cube, and we'll press Shift A and add a new UV sphere. Let's go ahead and zoom in and press Tab to go into Edit Mode. Now with both tools, Edge Slide and Vertex Slide, you have to be in Vertex Select Mode. And with Edge Slide, you have to select multiple vertexes. You can't just select one, you have to select more than one. And they have to be in a row. Because if you select, let's say, three vertexes that go kind of east to west, Blender will know then that you want to slide them up and down perpendicular to their direction. So to use Edge Slide, you can bring up the Edge menu by pressing Control E. And you'll find it near the bottom, uh, Edge Slide. And so once you click that, Blender knows because you selected three in a row that you're sliding them in a perpendicular direction and you can slide them up and down. You can even go way past. Actually, you know what? You can't. <laughs> they uh, limit to their next vertex. So it is a very handy tool if you want to kind of renegotiate all the locations of your vertexes on your mesh to improve your um, topology of your mesh. But it has that limitation. You can't slide just one vertex. And this is where vertex slide comes in. If I select just one vertex, I can now use Vertex Slide, which I can get to under the uh, Vertex menu, Control V, and there it is. Let's go ahead and find it. Um, vertex Slide. The keyboard shortcut is Shift V. Can you get it under the uh, W Specials menu? Um, no, you can't. So it has to be under the Control V Vertex menu or under Meshes and Vertices and Vertex Slide. Let's go ahead and press Control V and use Vertex Slide. Now they kind of did something that was kind of unique with this tool. Once you check Vertex Slide or click Vertex Slide, you'll notice that the edges, when you hover over them with your mouse around the selected vertex, gets highlighted. And that means that it's going to let you choose which direction you want to slide that vertex. Do you want to kind of lock it to the direction in 3D space of that edge or that edge or that edge or that edge? And so you choose one, and then you can slide in that direction. But you're not limited to just between the two vertexes. You can keep on sliding in any direction. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the, um, the edge going up and down. And as you can see, it'll allow me to slide in that direction basically to infinity. But it will always be locked to those exact uh, or in that exact direction. So this becomes handy if you have a character mesh. I'm going to go ahead and delete this UV sphere and add a, um, a cylinder. And let's go ahead and press 1 and 5 and rotate this in negative 90 degrees. Let's say that this was a character's arm and you had some loop cuts. And you wanted to adjust where a few of these vertexes were. You could use Ed Slide in this case. So you could select those three and press Control E and use Edge Slide and you can slide them in either direction. Or if you only wanted to adjust just one, you could now do Control V and use Vertex Slide and slide it in one of those directions after choosing uh, which direction to go. So that's the Vertex Slide tool. It's a very handy tool. I'm glad it's there. I'm sure I'll use it in a future video. But that's it for the eight new features of BMesh and NGONs. I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.